So while I'm waiting, um, if you guys, uh, first of all, if you'll sprinkle for me and spread the love, I'd appreciate it. Um, secondly, I put the pattern for the top hat. Um, it's under the featured tab. It's the very first post. So I will keep that there for a while. Um, so if you guys need to get a copy of it, you can get it on my business page. It's, it's a pinned post. So now you'll see wording on it. I actually got the pattern from, it's called fleecefun.com. And they have different um, tutorials on there too that are pretty fun. Uh, they have a mini pirate hat. That one's fun. I've done that one. Okay, just a second. All right, let's get in here and see if that's caught up with itself yet. Okay. You know how Facebook is. It just, it's fine until you go live and then it has a mind of its own, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Kathy. Okay, it's caught up with itself. So, um, again, um, if you could spread the love for me, appreciate it. Hey, Sally. Hey, Christina. And, um, again, the pattern is a PDF, and it's on my, well, is it a PDF? Yes. It's a PDF. It's a link that leads to the PDF because Business Pages doesn't let you upload PDFs, only groups. So I had to kind of figure out how to do that. Um, I couldn't upload it as a picture because it's in a document. So, uh, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, oh, and before I forget, I want to let you guys know that... Um, soon very soon a couple things i'm going to be starting um with michelle mcgraw from bella marie's week boutique um we're going to be starting a design group so we will be teaching how to do wreaths and centerpieces lantern swag garlands attachments doing sewing classes uh fake bakes you name it we're going to be doing it so you don't get just wreaths um, that'll be 27 a month and I will let you guys know um, it'll be posted on my business page when that's going to be launched I'm also going to be doing a workshop next month for New Year so that'll be fun hey Christina so stay tuned for that all right so I got my glue gun plugged in all right we're ready to go Yay! so on your pattern piece let me hang on here Okay, so on your pattern piece, you're going to have um, this piece right here, and um, you'll only need to cut one of these for fabric and the poster board. Actually, you're only going to need to cut one on poster board for each of these. Okay, so one piece of fabric, um, one piece of felt, and one piece of poster board for this. And then this is the hat band. I don't know, Christina, I have no idea. It could be the TV. Um, you'll need one piece of poster board for this, two pieces of fabric, and two pieces of felt for the band. And this is the top of the top hat. Um, maybe it's my fan. I don't know. Let me turn it off. Okay, so this is the top. You'll need one piece of poster board for this, one piece of fabric, and some cushioning. So you can use batting, um, you can use, um, I, I usually use batting, but I've got some stuff that I use for my bows that I can put in there. So, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get some poster board, okay? Um, I get this big piece of poster board at Walmart. I actually get them in an eight pack. So, um, it's, if you're going to be using a lot of it, it's cheaper that way. Where are my scissors? Here they are. I cut this in half just because it's easier to, to deal with. Use the 
leftover of this one. I'm going to put this one on here. Um, let's do it this way. I'm only going to need one of these. I'm trying to get my... There we go. Okay, so most of the time... Hey, Michelle! Hey, 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 girl! Um, hey, Vicki! So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just trace this out. Now, most of the time... Um, when I sell these, I don't put a hole in the middle. Um, but I'm doing this for an order, and she wants a hole in the middle, but no attachments, which means no, like, elastic or um, clips or anything. So this will be kind of be good so you can see how I do the hole. Because I think last time when I did it, there was no hole in it. So, okay, so then I'm going to make one of these. This is the top. Okay. And then I'm going to make one of these. I'll just cut this across. There, that's off my table. I don't have a like having a lot of stuff on my table. <laughs> okay. So going to trace around this. So this ends up being about a four inch tall top hat because once you cut this, I'll show you. you kind of, I always bring it up to my face because I'm blind, but I keep forgetting you guys need to see what I'm doing. <laughs> so on the board, it's going to be, yep. It's right at four inches. So once you put the top on and the band on, it's going to be about four, four and a quarter maybe. Now, if you want to do a bigger hat or even a smaller hat, like I said, I got this pattern from fleecefun.com. Um, if you go in the search and, and just put mini top hat, the pattern should come up. They have four different sizes of this pattern, okay? This one is the medium pattern. Um, now, the large would end up being about six inches tall. And the mini is like this big. It's really small. So there's mini, there's small, there's medium, and there's large. Um, they also have a fun pattern for like a mini pirate hat. That one's fun. Hey, Lisa. How are you? Hey, Sandra. Okay, so there is the hat part. This is not the fun part. I know, just cutting out stuff. Sorry. Part of the process, right? And while I'm cutting this out... I need to go get my piece of foam or padding. Like I said, you can just use batting, um, but I use a stabilizer that I use for my bows. I'm just gonna keep this. I can use this for another piece. Let me just cut that real, real quick. I'll be right back. Hold on just a second. Uh, mm -hmm. to cut that earlier. Sorry. So, you guys done all done doing your Halloween? Moved on. Hey, Terry. And moved on to fall and Christmas. I'm pretty much kind of done with fall, I think. Um, unless something else comes up that I decide I want to make. So I'm strictly doing just Christmas now. So you guys, these these top hats are so fun. If you're doing, especially like for Easter, you can put them on top of your bunny heads and all kinds. Of, you can do all kinds of things with them. You can make centerpieces out of them. I've done that before. 
Okay, so what you want to do with this, because you need to cut out the middle, you need to poke something through the middle. Um, Kelly, the pattern is from fleecefun.com. It's actually on the pattern itself that I've uploaded on their website. It is on the pattern itself that I uploaded into my page. Okay, I just want to cut out the hole. Now, the pattern, the hole in the pattern is going to be bigger than this. So, what I did is I actually made it a little bit smaller because once you fold this, you want a little bit of the hat on the inside of this. Otherwise, it's really hard to get it to line up. I wanted a little bit of space there so I can have some wiggle room. But there, the hole on theirs is a little bit bigger. Trial and error, folks. Trial and error, right? Okay. Let me see if I can get down just a little bit more. All right, so now we got our pattern pieces cut out. Now we're gonna cut out our fabric. So this one is two different fabrics. I think the last one I did was just one fabric, if I remember right, I don't know. So this one, I love this fabric. I got this fabric on Etsy. Hey Kay, how are you? Hey Kelly. Um, I got this fabric on Etsy. Um, and I love it because it's got like a different greens in it, dark blues, turquoise, purple, and the scales. Um, this one, I'm going to also, uh, what I do with this, and I'll show you at the end, but what I do is I actually put glitter on each of the scales. <laughs> you know, go big or go home, right? All right, so you, since the scales go down, you want the pattern... So the curve of the top of the pattern to be at the top. Okay. This is not. I need to go over here. There we go. I'll make sure I'm in the right. All right. So what I do is I just cut about maybe an inch around because you're going to need some room for the fabric to fold over. And actually, I got both of these fabrics on Etsy. So if you look up like, because um, it's perfect for mermaids, but if you look up like um, dragon, dragon, um, dragon scale fabric, this comes up. Isn't it pretty? Oh, pretty. Let me see if I can get a close up of it. Pretty. This one also came from Etsy. Isn't this one gorgeous? It's iridescent. And it's also like a mini scale. All right, so this one is a bigger piece of fabric, so I'm gonna t you're gonna need two pieces for this one. Okay, in one you need to make this actual size and one a little bit bigger because you're gonna and you'll see when I'm done. So you need to make this one a little bit bigger. Again, about an inch around, and then I. Just trace a hole in the middle. I'm not going to cut it yet. I'll show you why. Okay. And this one. one. Okay. I'm going to make this. Because the scales go up and down. Even though this one's sideways, it's going to be at the bottom. So I really don't care. So this one. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm actually going to trace. Okay. And I save, because I use this fa the same fabric for my mermaids as well, and I keep all these little pieces like this for like top hats and stuff like that. Comes in handy. Thank you, Penny. Hey, Kay. Sorry. I know, isn't it pretty? I love this material. I bought a bunch of it because I didn't know if they were going to carry it again for next year. But I tell you what, that mermaid tail that I make, whoo, that thing is a bear to make. It's not my favorite. It's pretty when I'm done with it. 
because it's got all sparkly with this and iridescent. And I got glitter all over it and stuff like that. But I swear, I think when I make it, <laughs> then I've got to make one tomorrow. So pray for me, guys. <laughs> And for those of you who just came on, if you wouldn't mind sprinkling for me, I appreciate it. I know there's a lot of people out there that were wanting to know how to make these. So, so this one, what you do want to do with the hole in the middle is you want to kind of make a slit right here. And then just cut up to the pin mark. And this is, and you're just cutting triangles, okay? So this is how you're gonna fold it over. Okay. Actually, no, hold on. That's the other one. Sorry. That's the other one. This one you want to go ahead and cut out. <laughs> ah! Am I confusing you yet? Sorry. It's been a minute since I've made one. I make a lot more of these during like the springtime because I have one that I've made um, I put bunny ears on that one's really cute okay so there's that one this one is the one you want to make a slit okay and then just make cut triangles from the middle thank you Penny um, Penny, so you can use the mermaid hats for, um, like some people will ask, some people wear them. Um, I actually get some orders sometimes that people like this lady bought, um, the Harley Quinn top hat for me for Halloween and she was actually going to put it on top of her pumpkin. So, but you can put it on top of a mannequin head. You can use it as a uh, centerpiece. Oh, no, you're fine, Carolyn. I mean, you can always watch the beginning. Uh, you can always watch the replay at the beginning. So you're going to hear it's football song. So you're probably going to hear my husband yelling. Can't do anything about that. Sorry. Um, and people wear them, too. So I give the option of having either clips or elastic. So people will um, choose that. Or they won't have anything. Usually, um, I sell to a lot of wreath makers, so they don't want the whole or the um, clips or elastic. They just want it. All right, let's see here. I'm just trying to do this the best. I'm gonna do. I'm trying to do this without wasting a lot of. There we go. I think I'm just gonna do it this way. So you want one piece of felt for each pattern piece. This, I don't use the felt if I don't have a hole in the middle. The only reason why I'm using the felt is because there's a hole in the middle and it just makes the top finished. I mean, you can see the inside and you don't want a bunch of glue and stuff showing and stuff like that, so. So then you want two pieces for this one. So the brim is the only one you want two pieces of fabric and two pieces of felt. Okay. Because you're also going to need wire for the brim as well. And I use millinery wire. You could probably get away with using um, 22 or 19 gauge wire. This is, you can get this from the floral department. It's kind of flimsy stuff. You might try using that, but it's really kind of small wire. Um, but you could try it and see. I use the millimeter wire, which I get from um, Etsy. If you just type in millinery wire, it'll come up. And I use white. Okay, so I'm just gonna trace this. Okay, that one. A lot of cutting before. Okay. That one. 
this one. Now when I cut this, I cut it on a little bit on the inside of that pen mark because you're going to put it um, once you fold over the fabric, you're going to put it, and you don't want it, um, showing. You'll see what I mean. It's, it's easier for me to show you than to explain it. Because I'm just so used to just doing it. <laughs> Reese, I can sit there and explain it all day long, but with something like this, it's a little bit more detailed. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this. Sorry, I have to have my fan on. It's hot in here. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to cut this. Okay. And for those of you who just joined, don't forget. Um, I don't know if you saw it the other day or not, but um, shortly when we get our logo done and everything, um, we, meaning Michelle McGron, Michelle McCraw and I, um, from Bella Marie's Wreath Boutique, is going to be opening, uh, launching a design group, and that will be twenty-seven dollars a month. So you'll get. Tutorials on wreaths and centerpieces and lantern swags and garlands and all that good stuff. Plus, I'm going to be teaching you some sewing classes and uh, we teach some fake bakes and attachments, wreath attachments. Since I don't sell them anymore, there's no reason why I'm, I can't teach you all guys how to do that, right? So, spreading the love, spreading the love. Okay. I'm just going to cut this out. I know this is the boring part, you guys, so we're just cutting. Also, next month, uh, no, I'm sorry, not next month, uh, middle of December, I'm going to be doing a workshop for New Year's. So you're going to have three designs for New Year's. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a a wreath, not sure if it's going to be a grapevine yet, or a regular wreath, um, a lantern swag, and a centerpiece with, uh, they call it a table candle abra, but it's one of those things where it's got the three candles on a stand, I don't know what they call it, I don't know what that's called, so that'll be fun. You heard that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's not going to be really a class. I mean, it is, but it's not going to be, it's going to be a, a live class, so I can still do it. You're welcome, Irene. And Michelle is very talented. I love her work. She likes to think outside the box like I do. And you guys know how I am about that. I don't like doing anything anyone else does. It drives me crazy. Okay. We're done cutting everything. Time to assemble. Yay! The fun part. Okay. Now, the first part that I start with is the band. Okay? What I do is I usually get all of my pieces together. I don't know what that was about. Um, let's see. These go together. And, oh, you know what? I forgot to... I'm like, I'm missing a piece. Forgot to do this piece. Let's see. Okay, sorry. I knew I was forgetting something. 
All right, let me save that piece. Okay. So then I put these pieces together. That way I have everything set up. Oh, thank you, Irene, for the stars. Yes, you will have to show and tell. And Rochelle, I will also share your um, designs on my business page as well. So you don't have to worry about that. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put one of the pieces of the felt on first. Okay, I'm just going to glue that on. I'm just going to go all the way around. You want to get it all in the middle as well. And the reason why you want to get it all in the middle instead of just around the sides um, is because you don't want it pulling up. You want everything stuck down. Hey, Kara. Hey, 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 girl. Okay. Once you get everything cut, everything pretty much goes um, pretty fast. Okay. Now, I see if there's a little little left right here. I'm just going to cut that. If you don't have to, but it drives me crazy. And you all know how I am like that. Okay. So, I'm going to get the wire. Now, this is millinery wire. They make it special, specifically for hats. It's got a, it's a wire with, I think this is a, uh, 19 gauge wire. I think it's a 19 gauge wire. See how much bigger it is? And it's got this rayon covering on the front of it, on or wrapped around it. It's heavy duty stuff. Okay, so what we're gonna do, this is a, it comes in a 60 yard roll. Alright, hold on. There we go. Okay. So, I just start at the edge, right here. Make sure you can see. Okay. And you want to put this down and you want to hold it for a minute. Because you let go, it's going to come off. Okay. This is what's going to make your, your hat bend. And shape. This is how you can shape it. Again, you can try using the floral wire. I haven't tried it. So, um, what you might do is you might take a piece of floral wire and a piece of poster board long enough and glue a piece on there and fold it and see how it stays. That's one way. That way you're not doing all this work and then finding out it doesn't work. Always test a piece out first. Okay, so we're just going around the edge. See how it comes on. Um, this round that's on the outside of it as well helps, makes it stick as well. Hey Susan, how are you hon? Uh, Penny, yes. Um, in the design group I will be teaching how to do my bows as well. Which you'll need wire just like this. This is the same wire that I use. Um, that's why I'm also teaching the um, sewing classes because my bows are sewn and you'll need to know how to sew in order to do those. Um, I believe, Becca, that this wire is a 19 gauge wire. I've had this for so long I don't remember. But um, if you go on to Etsy, I got this the whole roll from Etsy. Just type in millin millinery wire. <laughs> um, it's M I L I N E R Y. Okay. Uh, there's going to be some places that pop up that are going to have it. Um, the one I get is a 60 yard roll, which should last you a while. She has it in, I can't remember the name, sh the, the name of the shop. Um, but she has it in black and in white. The white is really hard to come by. Um, I've tried looking for it on Amazon and it's, I just can't find it on Amazon. It always brings up like, um, floral wire or, um, electrical wire. 
that doesn't help me, right? You can Google it, and if she doesn't have it, um, I mean, there's other people that carry it on Etsy, but she's the one I always get it from. I'll put the name of the place where I get it from on this post when um, I get done with this live, and I'll put the link on there so you guys have it. How's that? Will that work for you guys? So I don't cut this until I've glued it down because <laughs> you want to be able to hold on to it while it's glued. See, I get glue all over myself. Okay? And then once it's glued down enough, you can cut it. Um, Susan, it's a design group that Michelle McGraw and I are, are going to be launching. She's from Bella, Bella, Bella Marie Breathe Petite. Did I say that right, Michelle? I, I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Hey, hey, hey! Craft Queen of Horns in the house! Hey, Carrie! Okay, so now you can take your liner. Done. That's all you have to do. That's it. A little bit of wire. And I take, I always take one of these and put it like that so it doesn't come unraveled. In the drawer. Now, you take your other piece of felt. Okay, put it on top, match it to the sides, just go on the inside of the wire, just do like you did before. Did you guys notice that the price of the Yes, um, Carrie, the pattern for this top hat is on my business page. It's the very first post at the top of the page under the feature tab. And um, if for some reason it ends up, because I'm going to keep it on there for a while. Um, I'm not going to have it up there forever, but I'll keep it up there for a while. But if for some reason later on, that it, if you come back to get it, it's not there. You can get it from fleecefun.com. They also have, uh, she also has a video on there on how to do it, the top hats as well, but she doesn't do hers as detailed as mine. She doesn't do all this belt and stuff. Okay, so then we're gonna take this bottom piece let me see if I can, okay, let me see if I can go this way, yes, okay, okay you want to match it up the hole to this pin mark that you put on, and I'm going to get another glue stick, and I just want to put it all the way around, again, the reason why you want to put the glue all the way around instead of just around the edges is because if you're putting clips or anything like this and you don't have the middle of this glued down, it's going to lift. So you just put it all the way on there. There you go. Just line it up. Okay. And then I turn it over and kind of smooth it out. Get all the wrinkles out. You're welcome, Carrie. Hey, Amy. <laughs> Glue on my table. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut the sides. You don't want to cut all the way to the brim because if you fold it over and you cut all the way to the brim, you're going to see the cut mark. Okay, so you just want to cut. Let me do this. Let me do it just a tad more on this part, and then I'll move out when I start putting the hat together. Okay, so about a quarter inch away from the edge. There we go. Okay. Now, you just want to put glue at the edge right here and just start folding it over. If you get your fingers in the glue, because you know I will, right?
<laughs> well, with this one, we have a little hole in it. Um, you should definitely be able to use it as a tree topper, that's for sure. And like I said, she has, um, I just, I've got all sizes, I've got all her sizes for her patterns, but this is the one that I use the most because it's the most popular size. This is the medium size. So she's got a mini, which is really small, a small, this is the medium, and she's got the large, which the large ends up being like a six inch hat, and this one ends up being about four inches. Four, four and a quarter inches tall. I know it doesn't sound like much, but you'll see how big it really is when I get done. I'm just... Hot tea. I told you I'd get my fingers in the glue. If you don't have give enough fabric to put around the edge, it's going to be hard to see how this one kind of narrow. Cheeky Sue. I hear my doggy behind me. I didn't hear her nails on my floor. Hey, Joy. Okay. Now, with this part, what I do, instead of putting glue all the way around here, I just put it on the triangles itself. I know it seems kind of monotonous, but this way you're not getting glue all over your hands, all over the hat. And it's going to, with the felt, it sticks right to it. See? Just like that. place this piece on here. Oh, um, because I've had people ask me this too. In the design group, I'm also going to be teaching how to make my fabric pumpkins as well in the fall time. It'll be next fall, but that's one thing that I do plan on teaching everyone, or the group at least. So there's some fun things that we're going to be having in the group. I know Michelle and I are still working out the details. I know there's going to be coupon codes and, you know, fun things in there and everybody will get first dibs on new supplies and all kinds of stuff. Oh, by the way, I should also be getting those colored jewels in um, that everybody's been asking me about as well on Wednesday, I think, sometime on Wednesday. It's, right now it's in California, so it's on, it's on its way here. Yes! Finally! It took a, now if you get a lot of, you know, leftover like this, just clip it. Okay. And then, we're going to end up putting trim around this, but I don't want this so much of it lifted, so I just put a little bit of glue on here, around the edge, okay. I like everything glued down. I don't like anything hanging out and loose and fancy free. Ooh, ooh. I'm sorry. That just kind of slipped out. <laughs> hey, Pamela Lee. Okay. Now, um, I do have. Hold on, I gotta get my trim out. 
thought I had that out already. I've got it on my ribbon roller here. Now this um, ribbon roller I have, a lot of people use it for mesh. I used to, but now I just put ribbon on it. And it's from Susie's Wreaths and Things. So if you're look, if you're using a lot of mesh, um, like I used to use it for when I was doing the work wreath forms, but I don't use those anymore. So now I just use it for ribbon. But if you're still doing, I know I'm hitting the camera, sorry guys. But if you're still doing the wreath work wreath forms, that um, mesh roller is awesome. Let me see if I have more. I know I have more. There it is. Bins down here. Hold on. Now that trim um, I got from Paper Mart. So if you're looking for different colors of GIMP braid trim, um, check out Paper Mart. They also carry wire ribbon and double mesh. And so a lot of colors and uh, designs in ribbon that a lot of people don't carry. So check out um, Paper Mart, okay? Let me give you the SKU number on this one, if I can remember which one is the right number. Um, well, there's two numbers. I'll give them both to you. 5828477. And then the other number is P0... Three seven one seven three three. I don't know if that's a zero or a oh. Well, thank you, Carrie, for coming. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Okay. So this is a three eighths inch. Okay. You don't want the five eighths. You want the three eighths inch trim. Because a 5 eighths is going to be too big. I just cut that off because it's... Let me show you a trick. Now, this gimp braid likes to fray a little bit. So what you want to do is you want to take a lighter and just singe the end. Okay? It'll keep it from fraying. Now just pick up the... It doesn't really matter. You want either this side or this side to be the back. Okay? I'm just going to put some glue on the edge. Just want to put it right here on the edge. Okay. The paper mart has all kinds of colors. Um, they don't have, you know what, it's funny because they don't have some colors, like they, don't, they don't have purple, and they don't have green. Um, there's some colors that they don't have, but they do have a lot of colors. They've got a baby pink, they've got um, a fuchsia, they've got cream, they've got white, they've got gold, I think they've got silver, brown. They've got all kinds of colors. And they're cheap. And it's not cheap quality either. So check them out. I get some of my ribbon from there too. Hey mom! Maybe that's it. The Sparkle Store? That sounds familiar. Yep. That's it. The Sparkle Store. That's the right one. Thank you, Susan! The Sparkle Store! On Etsy, that's where I get my millinery wire. And she only carries it in white and black. So, she carries it, I think, in um, 21 gauge and 19. So, either one will work. 
the reason the only reason why I say the 21 will work on that and not the the floral wire is because the millinery wire is wrapped in that rayon so which makes it more heavy duty uh, no worries mom okay now we're gonna do the band okay so how I do this is you want to make sure if you're doing a pattern that the pattern is going the right way okay I mean if you cut the this on here while it's like this you can't really mess it up anyway but if you cut it square and you put it on and then cut it you may put the pattern on wrong so keep mindful of that so this one you only want to glue around the edges and the reason why is because if you glue in the middle there's no way for the um, fabric to stretch in order to bend see what I mean if if you had glue in here, see it's held loose like this, but once you bend it, see how tight that becomes? And you don't want to put glue in the middle. There's a hand in there, I feel it. Okay, now with this one, you're gonna want to, what they call miter the corners. So what that means is you want to make a cut here at a diagonal, and then a cut this way, diagonal, okay? So it looks like that because that way um, it makes the corners flush okay cut diagonal cut diagonal and again you can cut the same way on this one you don't go all the way to the poster board I'm so used to doing like this as I do it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the same thing as we did before. Just put a little bit of glue at the edges and just kind of fold those over. Hope you don't get your fingers on the hot glue. Now see when you fold that over, you don't have a lot of fabric right there that's all bunched up. That's gonna, that's why you miter the corners. You do that in sewing too, like if you have a corner, you always miter the corners. Oops, I'm gonna help if I put glue right there. Has anybody watched the new Hocus Pocus? Hey CJ! Aw, thank you Pamela. I know, there's not a lot of fluff with me, is there? I just tell it like it is. <laughs> there's no, there's no idle chit chat with me. I just keep going, you know, telling you how to do it as I go. But, I haven't watched the new um, Hocus Pocus yet. I've heard mixed reviews on it. Um, I've heard that some people thought the beginning was really slow, but once the plot got going, it was good. Some people thought that the second one or the first one was better. So you're gonna have a little bit left on this one, which is fine. We're gonna we'll cut the excess off, but you want to get it flush with the end. Okay, so I'm gonna put some glue right here. Put right here. Did you like it, Susan? I have three times. It's awesome. <laughs> <Pappy>. <laughs> I haven't. I always have to watch the. I'm gonna have to watch the first one again because I mean it's not like I don't remember what it's about, but I I watch Hocus Pocus at least like ten times during the Halloween season. I haven't even watched it yet. I'm behind. It was just all right, Brenda. See, I've heard mixed reviews. I don't know. To me, sometimes the, the second one can be a little. Bleh. Especially when they do it that far from the first one. I don't know. So, <laughs> this makes me laugh. But you know how they're having the new 
the new Halloween movie, supposed to be Halloween Ends. Yeah, it's like, whatever. You can't kill Michael Myers. Hello? Michael Myers doesn't die. <laughs> I don't know. I just say it's funny. Okay. So just clip off the excess around the edges. Okay. Now this part, is a, it's a little time consuming, but it's... You'll need to do this part. It's part of the process. Okay, so you want to just go halfway down, start from the middle, put a little bit of glue down. I do not overlap the edges. I just don't do that. Okay, and you want to meet the edges with the glue and hold it. And hold it. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a workout video. And hold it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, I crack myself up. Oh, thanks, Mom. I know you're a little biased, though. <laughs> okay, so you want to hold it enough, long enough to where it doesn't come apart. Okay, and then we'll do this part. Oh, I have to show you this something real quick when I get done gluing this. You guys are just going to laugh. You'll be like, what the? It's going to be something that I'm going to do in the design group. Because it's so out of the ordinary and out of the box. Okay, so, and we're holding. And hold it. <laughs> you guys feel like you're at a workout video? <laughs> Okay. And that should be good. See how it looks like a teardrop? We're going to fix that. And let me show you guys something real quick. I want to have you on here. You guys are going to be like, what the? Okay. So, I got these hands. Okay. Hands. And I got the bracelets today, finally. So it's pretty. Choo -choo. And those hands are going to go with this head. Can you guess what we're going to be doing? I need to fix her hair. I had to undo her thing, hair this morning because her the hair was too far back. Can you guess who that is? So we're, I'm going to be doing this in the design group, but it's going to be something a little different. And it's going to, all I can tell you, you have to be in the group to see, but all I can tell you is that it's going to be involving a frame. What? A frame? Like a wall frame. Tell me that isn't crazy. Okay, now we are going to put the top together. I know there's a lot of pieces to this until you get to decorate it. That's really the fun part. But, okay, so with this piece, that's, yes, and her gloves. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. I don't know, I just got on this Marilyn kick all of a sudden, and I had to watch the movie, and then... So Susan from Susan Chatterton from Sue's Passion Designs made that head for me. So if you're looking for a um, a mannequin head, she is awesome. Or you can also get them from Iva Thrite as well. Iva does them. Okay. So we're gonna glue this piece onto here. I'm just gonna glue right here. And that can be perfect. Okay. This is going to be your cushioning. Like I said, you can use batting as well. You know what? That's funny. Is because I was going to make hands for her, but I'm like, I don't want to make hands. Making hands is a pain in the rear end, honestly. Have you guys ever tried to make hands? 
stuffing them and all that? No thanks. So, what I did, I'm going to just put glue here. You also want to put glue in the middle. So what I did is I found silicone hands. They bend and everything on, on Amazon. So if you're looking for hands for like your mannequin head or whatever, look on Amazon. Silicone, it has fake fingernails on it and everything. So, I'm like, I am not making hands. I don't like making hands. I prefer not to make hands. They are a pain in the patootie. Yeah, silicone hands, right? Well, I guess you could too, but then the, I mean, you'd have to put wire. If you want them to bend, then you'd have to put wire in the fingers. So, I guess you could do that. But I just got the silicone hands that bend and put gloves on it. Done. <laughs> Now, obviously, the gloves were too long, so I just cut them off at the end and then, you know, zip tied it so they wouldn't come off. But isn't that funny? <laughs> My husband goes, Those are creepy. <laughs> he doesn't like the mannequin heads either. <laughs> he says they're creepy because he keeps staring at me. <laughs> All right. There we go. I'm going to kind of put this one down a little bit. Put it sticking straight up. There we go. Isn't that funny? Okay, so this one, so this is how there's going to go on here. This is why I cut it just a tad right inside the pin line because otherwise you'd be cutting the excess off and there's a chance you could cut the fabric around it. So just cut inside the pin mark. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay, put it on here, pull it over. Okay, this side. What's dad doing, mom? See outside? Is it raining outside? I don't know if mom's still in there or not. See how it's kind of sticking out from the sides a little bit? I'm going to go ahead and kind of cut it a little bit. You don't want to cut it too much because you do want some of that felt to kind of help stick to the top of this. Now this is going to be another workout moment basically. You're going to have to glue and hold. And we're holding. <laughs> okay. So you're just going to put it like this. Now when you have scales like this, you want your scales to be pointing down and not all over the place. So be mindful when you have a pattern, especially with like stripes, or like a harlequin polka dots you don't have to matter but when you have stuff like that you want to make sure that the pattern is going in the correct direction okay so you want to kind of sit here and hold this until it dries yeah i don't blame you mom that's what chuck's doing in the living room he's in the Later I'm watching football. They're probably watching the same game. I have no desire to do that. Okay, get the glue webs off. Okay, it should be dry enough. Yep. If it starts to pull away, then hold it for a little bit longer. Okay, you just want to put a little bit of glue right here. Okay, and just start pressing it in there. You don't want to put it on the inside because you'll run out of room and then it'll be all messed up. Okay, fold that. And then I'll show you what this looks like with the felt on the inside and you'll see why I do that. Okay. 
putting a little bit of glue at a time. Probably. So here I guys, this house is all decorated for Halloween. I don't ever decorate my house. I never have time. Like I haven't decorated my house for Christmas in like four years. By the time, well, half the t well, every other year I go home to Portland, so um, I don't decorate the years that I go out to Portland. Because that's the point. I'm not here to see it. Um, and then by the the other years, by the time I'm getting ready to decorate for Christmas, it's too late in the season because I've been too busy. So I just don't. That's sad, isn't it? Sad. So sad. Blue webs are driving me crazy. Okay. Well, the more you make these hats, the easier they get. Honestly, you guys. Even if you see a little bit of, if it's not perfect right here on the edge, we're going to cover that up with trim anyway, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> I don't... I don't ever, I, Halloween's one of my favorite holidays, but I never, I never decorate Halloween. I don't, the only one I really ever decorate for if I decorate is Christmas. I don't know, I just, it's a lot of work to decorate. Okay, this one. Last part. And then we can put the hat on for the bear. To the base, the brim, whatever you want to call it. Hey Georgie, how are you? I don't know what that was about, but okay. Okay. See, it doesn't look the best. It's slop. It doesn't look real good. I mean, it's not sloppy, but it's on. Hold on. I put a little bit more glue right there. Thank you, Kay. You have the same name as my mom. Well, she spells hers K Y E. Okay. Now, um, you want to keep in mind that you want to find the back. This is where you started with the the trim. Okay. And I want to put your hat on here. You see how it looks in, inside. See how it looks really finished on the inside? If you didn't have this felt on the inside, with if you're doing a hole in the middle, you're going to see all the glue in here. It's just not pretty. People don't want to see that. Okay. So you put your hat on here. You want the point toward facing towards the back. Okay. And you want it pretty even on the sides. Now. What I do, so I remember where to put it when I glue it, is I take a pin and I just mark where the hat is sitting. This way I don't have to redo it and get glue all over everything. Okay, there. Now you got your marks where your hat sits. So you just get glue. Put it on the edge. Okay, put your point back on and put it down where your pin marks are. Perfect. See? 
easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. Now our hat is starting to take shape. Look cute. Move this up a little bit. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna take the trim and put it around the top. I'm not gonna put any trim here just because we're gonna be having this covered with feathers. So there's no point. It's a waste of trim. So I just wanna put a little bit of glue right here to get it started. Thank you, Pam. You could do these hats so elaborate or you can do them so simple. Like I took a, uh, one time, I did a regal hat. I don't remember why, what I made with it, but, and I took like a, um, a tiara, like a child size tiara, ones that they use for babies. And I put it around the top. You can put it around the bottom. You can do these however, the sky is the limit with these, you guys. I want to see all your top hat pictures too. I actually made a full size one one time, an actual person size one, big one. This girl, I made a, it was an Alice in Wonderland one. It was, it was cool. I've never made one before. I'm like, oh. she wanted to wear it. And I'm like, oh, I got to figure out your head size and that was hard. And that's why I don't do big ones. Thank you, Kay. Okay, so then you just bring it around to the edge and cut it. Change it. And we are done with the trim. I wasn't sure if I was going to need another one or not, so I'll just put that back in the bucket. You could even just leave it like this if you want. Oh, you need to put, um, I do need trim, because you need to put trim down here at the bottom. Okay, so this is the back. I'm gonna start here. This just gives it a nice finish. I always put trim, if there's a hole in it, um, I always put trim on it. You don't have to if you don't want to, but if you're gonna be selling them, it's a good idea. Um, it's just another attention to detail thing that people love. I've actually had people comment about this part such a small part of the hat that they commented about it. And they loved it. Attention to detail is where it's at. Glue webs. Yeah, it takes practice. It does. My first one <laughs> was not very good. Okay. Come on. You can do it. It just takes practice. Make a really simple one with, you know, fabric from, I don't know, like get a dish, a dish towel from Dollar Tree. Sorry. Or something like that and just practice with that. You know? I wouldn't use millinery wire for that, but you could always use the floral wire and practice with that. That way you're not wasting fabric and stuff like that, expensive fabric. Thank you, Pamela. 
was not very successful. Yeah, Kimberly, they just take practice, honey. They do. The more you do them, the better you get at it, just like anything. Because then you start learning, well, I don't like doing it that way. And you start doing it a different way that's better for you. All right, so there's the hat piece. Now we get to start decorating. Okay, and there's the bottom. So let me show you how to, let me tell you how to put the attachments on here. If you wanted to put attachments, like what I mean by that is cl either clips or elastic. Okay, so I get these clips. I get it. I, you want to make sure that they're flat. Alligator, I don't know, they call them alligator clips. I don't know. Do you get them at Hob I get these at Hobby Lobby. So what you want to do is, okay, so this is the front. You want to put the clip one on each side and you want, you got to obviously put it upside down, but you want the opening of the clip to be facing towards you. Otherwise it's not going to go on right. Okay. And you put one on each side like this and just glue it on there. And that way they can put it on their hair. Now, if you do elastic, um, you want to put the elastic on before you put the actual part of the hat on. And I use this size of elastic. I don't know, it's like a quarter inch, I think. And then what I usually do is I usually take it from, um, I don't know, let me see, I can tell you how long it would be. This is kind of a mess, isn't it? Just so you know. Okay, so I would take, so I take it from here, and then I stretch it, and then I take it from here. Okay, so that would be about 15 inches you would cut it okay and then if you want you would have to put it on right here in the edge before you put this part on and then you can kind of tuck it in as you're working with the hat that way they have an elastic band to put on if they want to wear it okay now let's get to the fun part Yay! so I got these colors from Hobby Lobby so I kind of alternated, um, I'll show you a trick to keep the feathers from looking like you killed a chicken in your room, okay? So you want to pull back the feathers, see how there's a little piece of rope in here? So again, fine, I'm going to start putting the feathers about um, an inch and a half from the back, okay? Am I losing you guys yet? <laughs> okay, so you want to just take it and put it right here. Hold it down. Like that. Okay. Then I'm going to take, I'm going to find, i going to kind of pull the feathers apart so where you can see the rope. And we're gonna put some glue right here. And we need to do that. Now, I'm gonna cut it where you see that rope. When you pull the feathers apart, is where you want to cut it. I should have cut it before I put it on here, but that's okay. Okay? You get minimal feathers. I mean, you're going to get some. I do keep some of the long ones, and I do glue them back on there. See? Oh, there's no feathers. <laughs> I, made <laughs> I made one one time that had white feathers on here, and there were feathers everywhere. <laughs> That's when he goes, did you kill a chicken in here? I'm like, yeah, I killed a chicken in my craft room. Hello. Kill chickens. Okay, so then we're going to take the purple and do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it first, and then I'm going to cut it. Okay, so I'm going to put it right next to this one. Then I'm going to put it right here. Okay, 
and just pull apart the feathers to you see. You're going to get some feathers flighting around, but not as much as if you took the time to actually pull them apart. Okay, so just pull them apart like this and cut it. Like I said, I save the bigger ones like that because I do glue them back on. Kind of give it some whimsical. See? Nice trick, huh? Okay, so I'm going to put more glue here. And put it down here. there. You want to kind of make sure that the rope is touching. I know, right? Have, <laughs> have feathers hanging out the cat's mouth like it just ate a bird. People will be like, you have a tropical bird in your house? What's with the purple feathers? <laughs> oh, isn't that funny? That is hilarious. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So we're going to alternate. I'm just going to kind of hold it and measure it to where the top of the hat is. Okay, pull this down. See, you can see the, the rope right there. Cool trick, huh? Trust me, I learned how to do all this stuff as I was going along, and it's like, ah, uh, these feathers are everywhere. I ended up getting one up my nose. It's like, ugh, seriously. Of feathers. See? No feathers. I mean, there are a few here and there, but they're not floating around like making me have a fur ball. <laughs> okay, so what I do is I just take a little bit of these ones that did come off and I put a little bit of glue at the end. Okay, and where it see kind of like it looks like it's kind of bare right there, just put it right there. Okay, because it that little bit of. Do the same thing with this purple one. Oh, there's two purple ones. Good. Okay. A little bit of glue goes a long way. You don't want to get too much glue because then you'll get in the feather and that's a mess all by itself. feathers. However, I do have one I'm going to put on there. Um, again, I got these feathers from Hobby Lobby. Okay. Okay. Pretty, huh? Okay, now that this one, also it's in the same section as these boas. They have them in different colors. I like these because they've got little whipsies on them. I call them whipsies. I don't know what they're called, but this is actually a barrette. So it's got a clip on it. I'll show you. How. It's really easy to put this on there. See how these little whipsies on it? Um, these are $1.99. And I think they do a 50% off on the feathers. I don't remember. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's funny. <gasps> that is hilarious. So you just want to, since it's curved, it's it's really not going to make that much difference. Okay. But you do want to hold the feathers back like this, 
and kind of put it right there. Now you're not really going to see the barrette or anything like that. Oh, there you are. Hold on. Let me just turn it around. There we go. So you want the back of the barrette in the back because then you won't see it. Okay. Isn't it cute? This little wrist piece. Okay. Um, now, hold on. I think I'm going to take a little bit of this trim. Pull back these feathers. I'm going to put a little bit of this trim right down here. it back in there. And I'm going to bring it all the way around, kind of measure it before. Okay. Do not start your feathers on fire, people. Oh, talk about a mess. Okay. So did they? I thought I saw them the other day. Well, shame on them. You could probably get them on Amazon, I'm assuming. Okay, so we're just going to put... Come on. You're going to kind of push it down with your finger when it's in a crease like that. This is where it gets hard. You can put trim all the way around, but there's no point in me doing that. to hold feathers and trim at the same time. There we go. There. Okay. Now, this is something that I do on this mermaid tail that is a little different. So this is um, purple ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby. This is in their wedding section. Um, it's more of a, um, it's a, it's a better quality ribbon than the ribbon that you get over in their sewing section. This is a one and a half inch. Is this a one and a half inch? Yeah, this is a one and a half inch and this is a one and a half inch of the turquoise. And I got them both in the wedding section. So, I am... Oh, this is a little piece left of a one inch, right? Yeah. So you want a one and a half inch and a one inch. I don't know why I have the one and one and a half inch. Okay, anyway. Um, I'm going to make this probably about 30 inches. I can always cut off the extra if I don't need it. I'm going to show you how to make a little kind of ribbon ruffle, if you will. You're going to need some thread and a needle. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, crap, I'm done. <laughs> you can use white, whatever color, it doesn't matter. Okay. I always do my thread, double my thread. Knot it. Okay, now I'm going to do this as I start this and kind of glue a little piece at the edge. You like this? This is really cute. Hey, Julie. Okay, now you want to keep your edges folded all the way across. So you want to take your needle 
I'm going to put it up inside this fold right here. Okay. That way you don't see the, the knot hanging out as it hides it. Okay, so we're going to do a stitch. We're just going to go in and out. Okay, so that way we can pull it and it ruffles it. So we're going to go in this way, this way, this way. Okay, and you'll see what I mean as soon as I start pulling it in and out. So it's a loose thread, so you can pull on it. And I was talking to somebody on the phone. I'm like, what is he doing? See when you pull on it, see how it curls up like that? We're making a ruffle. You don't really want to glue the top of this because your thread, your needle is going to have a really hard time going through the glue. So if you just keep your, <laughs> you hear my puffers. Okay. I just kind of keep pulling it until I like the, the length of it. You'll see what I'm going to do with it when I'm done. Okay. Now, try to keep it tight. So you can, you said you don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to tie it off. A little ruffle, a little flower ruffle. This will be the back since the thread's on the back. Okay. Now yeah. that's tied off. And then we got that one. Okay. I'm just kind of move the ruffles around a little bit. So I'm going to lay the back. <laughs> okay, we're going to do that with the one inch as well. I'm going to get a new piece of thread because I don't think I'm going to have enough for that one. <laughs> it sounds like a chicken. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Let's cut the edge of that so it's straight. Come on. Okay, I'm going to do 
the same thing with this one. So for those of you watching the replay, if you get bored with this part, just fast forward. This one's not going to be as big because it's going to go on the inside of the purple one. Let's go in and out. See how you can pull it like that and it makes it a hole. You can um, do this with wire ribbon as well. You just have to take the wire out and make a ruffle with that. I don't like doing that because it's a pain in the butt. Honestly. To me, this is faster. So. I know, this is a boring part. Sorry, guys. It's part of the hat. I gotta do it. If I didn't do it, she'd be like, um, there's something missing off my hat. <laughs> okay, I think this is gonna be good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just tie it off right here. Instead of doing it on the other way. Okay. And I'll just tie it off. Okay, let's do it off. Let me make sure it's straight. There we go. It's hard when they're little. You just want to match up the flat ends. See, that part's glued, so it's hard for the needle to go through. There we go. Oh, come on. It's fighting with me. Okay, fine. There. I win. <laughs> okay. Now, what you want to do, I'm going to take this little one and just kind of make it so it's not so tight. Let's a little bit. Okay, so this is going to go in here like that. Okay. So what you want to do is you would just want to take a, some glue. Go around the edges. And just put it on there like that. Okay, thank you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and we're almost done, you guys, I promise. I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to put those little threads right there. Okay. We're going to put something in the middle. Okay, so I got some little things to put on here. These are all from Hobby Lobby. So I got a little mermaid tail. There's two of these. Um, I just say I only use one at a time. Then they're $3.99. And then these are like little mermaid type buttons. And I get these in the jewelry section as well as this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bigger ones. 
I got a little thing I need to put these in, so I'm just going to cut that. I'm going to use three of these, I think. And then one of these to put it in the middle. Did you see one? Thank you. Okay. I'm only going to use two of those. Okay, so I'm going to put one over here. You guys can see what I'm doing. I'm almost done. So I just got to put these little things on there, and then we're done. Now, what I what I do with this hat too, though, is I actually put glitter on each scale. I'm not going to show you how to do that. So what I do though is I take some um, glitter, purple glitter, and some turquoise glitter. I'll show you that I get from. Uh, I think I get these from Hobby Lobby. Okay, the purple and the turquoise. And I put it in some Mod Podge. Oops, that one's open. Oh, that's nice. Um, I put it in some Mod Podge and, and mix it, and then I paint each scale. You gotta make sure, though, that you really clean your brush good with the Mod Podge. Rinse it out really well, or it will dry on your brush, and your brush is done for. Okay. I'm going to put that one on top of here, and then I'm going to put this one, some glue right there, and this one right here. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my mermaid tail. Now, this is actually a pendant, so um, it comes with a little loop on it. I just take it off. You don't have to cut that off because it's going to go underneath anyway, but I just do. Okay, so I'm going to put some glue on here. And put it right in between here. So you can at least see the tail. Okay. Then, like this. This one's got a bigger um, thing on the back of it. So I just take these, cut it off. And then I can take my smaller ones. I love these clippers. The curve, and you can get really flush and everything. Okay, so we're gonna take this one. And glue here. Make sure you don't get glue on your hands. And I'm going to put it right here. Come on, there we go. Right behind. There we go. Oh, and then we got how you want to do the hat when you bend it is I usually take my fingers, my index fingers in the back and flip it up with my thumbs like this. On both sides. Okay. When you have stuff on the side like this, it's going to be kind of hard to flip it all the way up. You can also do it like this. And then take your hand and kind of bend it in the front. Okay. Do the same in the back. Okay, there we go. I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to that. It drives me nuts if it looks crooked. Huh. Now I'll tomorrow I'll put the glitter on each scale. I'm not gonna make you guys sit through that. That's just dumb. Isn't that cute? And it looks finished on the inside and you got the trim on here.
Huh? What do you guys think? Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah, that's what I would do, Kay. It's just practice with some, you know, like you get a Dollar Tree tish towel that's not the terry cloth stuff, but, you know, just regular dish towels, and then you can cut it up and you don't, you're only wasting a dollar, right? Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Patty. It's so pretty. Love those. So you can see that you can do anything with these things. So. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. So you guys have any questions for me at all? I want to see what your hats look like. Oh, thank you, Kay. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Mom. I use some of these feathers too sometimes. They have these in Hobby Lobby in different colors. Um, so you can put them, I'll show you, you can put them like right here, obviously this doesn't really go with these colors, but, see what I mean? These are good for like little pirate hats, but I made, I use these for like my Halloween ones. I got it in lime green and purple. Um... Let's see. The CHP CHP dash one seventy. Um, it's one point three millimeter copper wire. That's all it says on it. CHP dash one seventy. I don't know. Type that in. It says max cut one point three millimeter copper wire. Use safety glasses. Whatever. Big weenies. These are safety glasses. Oh, you're welcome, Patty. And my everything is going to. Oh, my. The design group? <laughs> my everything. <laughs> Hello, you're funny. Oh, thank you, Irene. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Kay. Well, thank you guys for for coming and watching. Um, I'm sorry about the other video. I don't know what happened to it. Um, I didn't even know it was gone until somebody, I think it was Pamela, I think it was you that you know, that contacted me and goes, you know what happened to the video? I'm like, I, I don't know. The last time I checked, it was still there. So yeah, I went and looked and it wasn't there. So I'm like, well, I'll just redo it and I'll do it on my page. So um, what I'll probably do also is I'll probably upload this to my YouTube channel as well. So in case that does happen again, because um, I don't know if it was a group or if it was Facebook, I don't know what it was. So if it happens again, then it'll be on YouTube as well. Okay. Um, and if you go, my YouTube channel is under my link tree. So if you're on my Facebook page on the left in my about, my, my about section, it says link tree. All of my links are there. My website, my uh, Pinterest, Instagram, all that is there. So, oh, thank you, Trina. I appreciate it. You're so sweet. All right, guys. Well, if you have any questions, let me know. If you get stuck on something, um, I'm here to help. So, um, I'm glad you're able to watch this again. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.